Now, this 2022 NovDeck Core Mathematics, General Mathematics um, question paper, that's what they just finished writing. Uh, so, NovDeck 2022 Core Stroke General Mathematics. Now, the first one, question 1A, one the second and fourth terms, so we are being told that the second and fourth terms of a geometric progression GP are 54 and 6 respectively. So the second term is 6 and then the fourth term, um, no, that is the second term is 54 and then the fourth term is 6. We should find the nth term, that is un of the sequence. Now how do we write the general term? The general term of a GP is giving us that's un equal to a r n minus one. This is the general term. Now you have been told that the second term is 54. Hence, u of two is equal to 54. From the question, the second term is 54. So in place of the n, what do you have two? So wherever we see n, we just put so that is two minus one. So this implies we have. A R the n here is two, so two minus one equal to fifty four. What is two minus one? That is one. So you have A R equal to fifty four, and this is our first equation. Now, if you want a detailed lesson on sequence and series, both AP and GP, kindly call the numbers you are seeing on the screen for a copy of my pen drive. I have. All lessons, that is from form 1 to form 3, everything on a pen drive. It is an amazing material. So this is the second term. Now we are being told that the fourth term is 6. So the fourth term, that is u of 4, is equal to 6. Now in place of the n, we have 4 here. So this, we have to put 4 over there. So this implies that a r 4 minus 1. Our n is 4, and this is equal to 6. So we have a r to the power 3 equals 6. How come we have 3? 4 minus 1, and this is giving us 3. And clearly, this is our equation 2. So we need to find our first term, and then also the common ratio, which is r. So how can we do that? So we can say that equation 2 divided by equation 1. We solve it simultaneously. So what is equation 2? That is a r to the power 3 equals 6. And this is being divided by equation 1. What is equation 1? That is a r. So we have our a r here. And then we have 54 over here. Now what can we see? This a is cancelling out that a. Now indices, when the bases are the same, you are dividing, we subtract the exponent. So here we have r to the power 3 minus 1, this to the power 1. So r to the power 3 minus 1. And clearly, since we go here 1, since we go into 54, 9 times, we have 1 out of 9. And what do we have? We have r to the power 2 equals 1 over 9. Now, can we make the powers the same? Yes, we can make the powers the same. And we have r to the power 2. Now, 1 over 9 is the same as 1 over 3 all to the power 2. And clearly from here, because the powers, because the powers are the same, we equate the bases. So over here you can say this implies that r is equal to 1 over 3. So we've been able to find our r. Isn't it easy? That's very, very easy. Do you need all lessons? Are you struggling in um, core mathematics? Are you struggling in elective mathematics? Please call the numbers you are seeing on the screen for a copy of my pen drive. I have all the lessons from Form 1 to Form 3 on it. Now, let's see. So, we have our R now. We want to find the first term. You can either put it in equation 1 or equation 2. I want it to be in equation 1. So, you can say that put, put R equals 1 over 3 into equation 1 into equation 1. Now what is the 1? Equation 1 is a r equal to 54. In this case, we have our r to be 1 over 3. So you have a times 1 over 3 equal to 54. LCM is 3. 
So clearly 3 times, you have 8 times 1 over 3, equal to 3 times 54. Now this 3 is cancelling out that 3. Now we have A to be equal to 3 times 54. We are allowed to use the calculator, so we can use the calculator. 3 times 54, and this is giving us 162. We want to find the general term. But then we know that the general term is given by a r n minus 1. So what is our a? Our a is 162. Do you know our r? Yes, we know our r. That's 1 over 3 and minus 1. And this is the general term. Now the 2022 question number 1a. Isn't it easy? Very, very easy. I struggling in core mathematics or general mathematics, you don't have any problem at all. Can they call the numbers that you are seeing on the screen? And I have all my lessons to available on my website as well. www.stevecons.com. Just pay something small, and then you have access to all the videos. Novdek 2022, question number 1b. Says that if log 5x minus 4 equal to log x plus 1 plus log 4, find the value of x. So the b part, the 1b, um, we have the question log 5x minus 4 equal to log x plus 1 plus log. Four. Now, from the rules or from the laws of log, the bases are the same. We are adding, and clearly, what do we do? We multiply. So, from here, this is just the same as we have log 5x minus 4 equal to log x plus 1 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Bases are the same. We are adding. What do we do? We um, multiply. Now, from here, from here, what do we do? You see, if we have um, log A equal to log B, then we say that A is equal to B. That's what we say. Yeah, log A equal to log B, then we can say that A is equal to B. In this case, look at it, the base is 10, the base 10. So, you just equate this to that. So, clearly from here, we have 5x minus 4 equal to this multiplying this. We have 4x plus 1. Multiplication is commutative. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So this time this is the same as this times that. Now from here, what do we do? We expand using the distributive property. So we have 5x minus 4 equal to 4 times x. That is 4x plus 4 times 1. We have 4. Now, from here, what do we do? We group like terms. So, we have 5x minus 4x. This is moving to this side. And this is just equal to 4. Negative 4 crossing. That is positive 4. Now, 5x minus 4x. And clearly, this is equal to x. 4 plus 4. And we have 8. So, we have x to be equal to 8. What topic in general mathematics that you don't understand? Try and get my pen drive. All the lessons are on it. I've explained everything to the barest minimum. I have the weak students in mind, so I've solved a lot of questions. That would help the weak students understand. Call the numbers and get a copy of the pen drive. Son. Four years ago, he was seven times as old as his son. In how many years will Mr. Jibril's age be twice his son's age? That is very, very nice question. But let's take our time. What is the question saying? Mr. Jibril is four times as old as his son. It means that if you know the son's age, you'll be able to know Mr. Jibril's age. Age. So all that you say is that suppose or let let um, son's age let the son's age be 
equal to x. We are being told that Mr. Jebro is four times as old as his son. Therefore, Mr. Jebro's age, or father's age, Mr. Jebro's age is equal to 4x by four times as old as his son. Now, let's continue. Four years ago, very important, four years ago, it is talking of something in the past. He was seven times as old as his son. Four years ago. Now, let's suppose that your age now is 10. So, four years ago, what was your age? It's going to be 10 minus 4, which is 6. How do you get a 6? 10 minus 4, why? Ago, in the past. So, clearly, four years ago, the son's age will be x minus 4. Four years ago, Mr. Jebro's age will be 4x minus, that is 4x minus 4. But then we are being told that what? Four years ago, he was seven times as old as his son. Now, this implies that four years ago, Mr. Jebro's age will be 4x minus 4 because his age now is 4x. So, four years ago, the age of Mr. Jebro will be 4x minus 4. And then we are being told that it's equal to four years ago, he was seven times as old as his son. So that is seven times, seven times. What is the age of the son four years ago? Now the age of the son now is x. So four years ago, the son's age will be x minus four. So Mr. Jebro's age in four years, that is four years ago was four x minus four equals seven times x minus four. So four years ago, Mr. Jebro's age is seven times the age of his so I want to find x. How can you find x? On the right hand side, we expand using the distributive property. So we have 4x minus 4 equals 7 times x. 7x, 7 times 4, that's 28. So we have negative 28. Now from here, what do we do? We group like terms. We group like terms. So we have 4x. Now this positive crossing becoming negative. Negative x equal to what do you have here? Negative 28. Now this is negative 4. Moving, crossing the equal sign, become positive. So plus 4, plus 4. Now what is 4x minus 7x? And clearly, this is negative 3x equal to now negative 28 plus 4. And clearly, this is negative 24. We want to find x, so we divide both sides by negative 3. So you have negative 3x over negative 3 equal to negative 24 over negative 3. Now this and this cancelling, 3 is cancelling the 3 over here. Now this negative is cancelling the negative over here. 3 will go in 1, 3 will go into 24. How many times? That is 8 times. So we have x to be equal to 8. x equal to 8. Therefore, the sun's age, therefore, sun's age, sun's age, that is 8 years. Sun's age is 8 years, sun's age is x plus 8 years. Mr. Jebro's age, Mr. Jebro's age, so Mr. Jebro's age, that is 4x. But what is our x? Our x is 8, so we have 4 times 8. What is 4 times 8? That's 32 years. 4 times 8, and we have it to be equal to 32 years. 32 years. 32 years. Wow. Now, what is the question saying? The question says that in how many years will Mr. Jebro's age be twice his son's age? We are not looking for um, the son's age. We are not looking for Mr. Jebro's age. But then the question says that in how many years will Mr. Jebro's age be twice his son's age? So we can say that suppose or let n be the number of years that Mr. Jebro's age Oh, B, twice the years 
of the sun. It will be in the future. So he has said that let n be the number of years that Mr. Jibru's age will be twice the years of the sun. Now, the Mr. Jibru's age now is 32. That is Mr. Jibru's age now. So in how many years? Uh, it says, in how many years will Mr. Jibru's age will be twice the years of the sun? So you see, in the future, the age now of Mr. Jibru is 32. So that will be 32 plus n equal to, will be twice, twice, not twice the age of the sun. The sun's age would also be what? 8 plus that particular n, that particular number of years. Mm. The question, in how many years will Mr. Jebrus age be twice his son's age? So if that age is n, so that will be 32 plus n equal to 2 times 8 plus n. I want to find n over here. So let's explain using the distributive property. So you have 32 plus n, 2 times n, that's 16, 2 times, 2 times 8, 16, 2 times n, that is 2n. Let's group like 10. So 16 go here and will come here. So we have um, 32 minus 16 equal to 2n minus n. 32 minus 16, and clearly this is equal to 16. 2n minus n, and this is equal to n. So it means that in 16 years, the age of Mr. Jibros, that is Mr. Jibros' age, will be twice the age of his son. So in 16 years, Mr. Jibros' age will be twice the age of his son. Wow, that's it. That's very, very easy, very, very interesting. I have a lot of questions on my pen drive. I've taken my time, solved a lot of them. And I have the weak student in mind. So I've taken my time and I've considered a lot of questions. Now, the secret of understanding mathematics, the secret of enjoying mathematics is one, make sure that you're in class on time. Two, make sure you copy all that the teacher is teaching you on the board. Thirdly, after that, sit down. Sit down. Solve questions on your own. Solve questions on your own. That's the secret. Sit down. Solve questions on your own. All that you've learned, you apply in solving questions on your own. So this lesson, together with other lessons, are available on a pen drive. It has been arranged topic by topic. A lot of questions have been solved. Call the numbers you are seeing on the screen. And then also, you can also have the lessons on my um, website, www.stevecons.com. You pay something small, and then you have access to the videos to watch. Or you can call my number, get the pen drive of which you are not going to use any internet, and then you have access to all the videos as well. No pain, no gain. Mathematics is not a spectator of sports. Let's consider the next question. Novec 2022, question number 3A. That's a, that a very, very easy question. Now, in the diagram, O is the center. So we have been told that O is the center of the circle M and P. Now, if angle MOP is equal to 110, angle MOP is equal to 110, find the value of X. We want to find the value of X over here. Now, let's redraw, let's redraw the circle, let's redraw, let's redraw, and then uh, let's suppose that the center is somewhere here. This is where our M is. So we have this. This is our M. Uh, this is O. This is P. And it is obtaining an angle. It is obtaining an angle. And over here, now we have this side, the angle over here to be X, and then the angle over here is 110. 100. 
and 10. So we can consider MN as a call, MP as a chord. So MP, MP is a chord. So we know MP is a chord. Now it's not necessary for you to put it in the answer sheet that MP is a chord in the answer sheet. But then we have to know the difference between a chord and then a diameter. Now, a chord divides a circle into two segments. So we have the major segment and then the minor segment. But then a diameter is a special chord whereby it divides the circle into two equal, equal parts. So this is MP is a chord. So this part is the minor segment and then the whole of this part is a major segment. Now we have a relationship with a chord, the center and then the circumference. We know that the angle a chord subtains at the center is twice the angle that it subtains at the circumference. So here let's consider um, the same chord making an angle. So we are considering this. We are considering this. Making an angle at the circumference. Let's call here a. Now, because uh, we are bringing that, let's use short dashes. It wasn't part of the question. I uh, introduced it, so let me use short um, dashes. Now, we know that the angle a chord subtains at the circumference is equal to twice the angle the chord subtains at the center. So, we know that the angle, the angle, the angle a chord, the angle a chord subtends at the center at the center is twice the angle the chord subtends at the circumference the angle a chord subtains at the center is twice the angle the chord subtains at the circumference. Now, for a better understanding of circle theorem, general mathematics, kindly get my videos. I have taken my time. I have solved a lot of questions, a lot of questions for you. So clearly from here, what are we seeing? All that we are seeing that that is angle MOP is equal to two times two times angle M A P. So the angle a chord that is MP subtains at the center is twice the angle the chord subtains at the circumference. The same chord making an angle at the center. The same chord MP making an angle at the circumference. We are saying that MOP is equal to two times M a P. Now, do you know MOP? Yes, MOP. What is MOP? That is 110. So 110 degrees equal to 2 times MAP. So we want to find MAP. We want to find the angle over here. What do we do? We divide both sides by 2. So we have 110 degrees over 2 equal to 2 times, that is M A P M A P over 2. Now this is cancelling out that um, 2 go here, 1, 2 go into this 55 degrees. So uh, the angle M A P is equal to 55 degrees. So hence MAP, the angle over here is 55 degrees. Now, do we know of, we want to find X. Is there any relationship between angle subtended in opposite segment at the circumference? Do you have any relationship? Yes, yes. The sum of angles a chord subtends in opposite segment at the circumference add up to 180. So that is the angle here plus the angle here equal to 180 degrees. How can you put it? We can say that the sum, the sum of angles a chord subtends 
in opposite, opposite segments at the circumference. Very, very important at the circumference. At the circumference, very important. Add up to 180 degrees. So the sum of angles a cut subtends in opposite segments at the circumference add up to 180. So we are saying that MP is a chord and this MP is subtending an angle of X. The same MP subtending an angle of what? X in one segment at the circumference. The same chord subtending another angle of 55 degrees at the circumference. Pay attention. At the circumference. So uh, the same MP subtending an angle over here. The same MP subtending an angle over here. At the circumference, at the sec not at the center. So this plus this is never not equal to um, 180. But then the angle here plus the angle here add up to 180 degrees. So this implies what are we saying? Angle MAP. That is the angle here. Angle MAP plus angle MNP. MAP plus the angle M N. P, this is equal to, that is the angle here, that's the angle here, equal to what? 180 degrees. What are we saying? The sum of angles a chord subtains in opposite segments at the circumference add up to 180 degrees. Now what is MAP? That is 55 degrees plus the MNP equal to 180. 80 degrees. So we want to find MNP, so our MNP equal to 180 degrees minus 55 degrees. Now what is 180 minus 55 degrees? And clearly this is equal to 1, 2, 5 degrees. Now what is MNP? MNP. What is MNP? MNP is X. So clearly our X is equal to 125. Degree. That's very, very easy, very, very interesting. I have wonderful lesson on all the topics, including probability, circuit theorem, all the challenging topics, trigonometry, mensuration, one and two, everything. I have lessons on all of them. Call the numbers and get a copy of the pen drive. It is very, very affordable, very, very interesting as well. Now let's consider question number three being of VEC 2022. Now, there are M identical beads in a bag. 50 are blue, 30 are red, and the rest are white. If the probability of choosing at random a white bead is one out of three, find the value of M. Now, how do you find probability? Probability is number of events over the number of sample space now what do you have here we have been told that there are n identical beads in a bag clearly the number of sample space is equal to n 50 are blue so uh, number of blue balls is equal to 50 30 are red so number of red balls is equal to 30 and the rest are why do you know the rest no we don't know the rest but we have been told that the total is m we have been told that the rest the rest are white so clearly number of white balls will be equal to what m balls which is the total and then we have to take the blue balls from it which is 50 and then also take the number of red balls from it which is what 30 that will give us the number of white balls. We know we have the total number of beats to be M. Total number of beats is M. But then 50 are blue, and then 30 are red. So if you want to find the number of white beats, we we'll what M minus the 50 minus the 30. And clearly, this equals M minus 80. That's negative 50 minus 30. That's negative 80. So that is the number of white 
bids. Now we are being told that if the probability of choosing at random a white bid is one out of three. So probability of choosing a white bid, we are being told is one out of three. Now what is the probability of choosing a white bid? It's equal to what? The number of events over the number of sample space. In this case, that's number of W, number of white bids over the number of sample space. And this is just equal to one out of three. Now, what is the number of events? That was the number of white bids. That is M minus 80. M minus 80. Now, what is the number of sample space? The number of the sample space, what is it? M. M. And this is equal to one out of three. From here, what do we do? We cross multiply. We cross multiply. This is one. We cross multiply. We cross multiply. So three will multiply everything here. So we have three times M minus 80 equal to M times one. M times one. So this time this, this times that, expanding using the distributive property, 3 times m, that's 3m, three, 3 times 80, that is 240, equal to m. We want to find m, so we group like terms. So this has to come here, so we have 3m, positive m coming here, that's negative m, equal to negative 240, crossing to the other side, becoming positive 240. Now, 3m minus m, and this is just 2m equal to 240. We want to find m, so we divide both sides by 2. So you have 2m over 2 equal to 240 over 2. Now this 2 is cancelling that 2. 2 going to 24, we have 12, and then 0. So you're going to 0, 0 times, so clearly we have our m to be equal to 120. What is the question? The question says that, find the value of m. So the value of m is 120. Now for a detailed lesson on probability, please try and get my pen drive. I have wonderful lessons on it. All the topics from form one to form three, everything is available on a pen drive for sale. It is very, very affordable. Don't forget no pain, no gain. Mathematics is not a spectator of sports. And for all the solution of the NovDeck 2022, can you get to my website, www.stevecons.com. NovDeck 2022, question number four. I would urge you to pause the video and try your hand. On don't forget, no pain, no gain. Mathematics is not a spectator. Of spot. Now, for a complete solution of all the questions in this year's NovDeck paper, that is 2022 question paper, kindly visit my website, www.stevecons.com. Everything is available over there. The height, each meters of water above sea level at entrance to a dock is given by y equal to 18 minus 10 sine 5x where the x is greater than 0 and then the x is less than 15. Find a, the value of y when x is equal to 12. So what do we have? We have um, y to be equal to 18 minus 10 sine 5x. This is what we have. This is what we have. So we want to find the value of y when x is what? 12. So when x is equal to 12. What is our y? What is our y? This is very simple. You substitute wherever you see the x, you substitute 12 over this. We have 18 minus 10 sine 5. What is x? Uh, x is 12. So you have our y to be equal to 18 minus 10 sine. Now, what is 5 times 12? That's 60. 5 times 12 is 60. Now we can punch 18 minus 10 sine 60, we are allowed to use the calculator and clearly this would give us, that is 
3, 9, 7. This is the value of y. Let's leave our answer to three significant figures. So clearly our y is equal to 9.33. Um, okay, yes. So you can see that that's meters, meters, meters. Um, and there's three significant figures, three significant figures. The first one says that find the value of y when x is equal to 12. So we are into the, the height. So the height is given as that. So uh, that is h. But then we are into to find the value of y. So just y to be equal to that. Okay, now let's see the b. The b says are correct to two significant figures x when y is 10. On find x when y is 10. Now we know that y is equal to 18 minus 10 sine 5x. Now what is y? Over here we are saying that we are being given that y is 10. So we are being given y to be equal to 10. So in place of the y, we have 10 equal to 18 minus 10 sine 5x degrees. We want to find x. What do you do? So this has to come here, this has to go there. So we have 10 sine 5x degree. This is coming here, this will go here. That's 18 minus 10. This is moving here. Now, so this is giving us 10 sine 5x. 18 minus 10, and clearly we have 8. We can divide both sides. So we want to find the x where we divide both sides by 10. So um, we have, let me squeeze it here. So we have 10 sine 5x, so this over 10, equal to 8 over 10. So this is cancelling out that. Now, uh, 2 going to 8, 4 times 2 going to 10, 5 times, so we have sine 5x equal to 4 over 5. We want to find x, we want to find x, we want to find x. So clearly, sine inverse, you have to take sine inverse of both sides. So we have 5x equal to sine inverse of 4 over 5. Of four. Now what is sine inverse of 4 over 5? So we have our 5x to be equal to 53.13010. So you divide both side by 5. So 5x over 5, 53.13010 over 5. This is cancelling out that. We are allowed to use the calculator, and clearly using the calculator, what do you have? We have 10.6260. Now, what is the question saying? The question says what? Two, two significant figures. That's what the question is saying. Two significant figures. So clearly, two significant figures. So this is the first significant value. This is the second significant value. But what is following six? So five and above has to change that the zero here to one. So this would be approximately 11. That is two significant figures. So our x is approximately 11, which is two significant figures. Don't forget that the video, everything that is from question one all the way to the last one, everything is available on my website, www stevecons.com. If you have any challenge, you can WhatsApp me, you can call me, and then I'll be able to help you so that you get access to all the past questions. Now, don't forget that I have lessons, all the lessons that is from form one to form three, everything is available on a pen drive. Also, very, very affordable. Call the numbers and you'll be able to get access to all the lessons as well. Now let's consider question number five, NOVDEC 2022. Now the area of a, an equilateral triangle is 53 with 3 centimeter square. Find correct to the nearest tenth, the perimeter. Now let's note something. Let's note. Now uh, let's consider a triangle. How do you find area of a triangle? Now, area of a triangle is given by half 
times the d times the height. Now, looking at the question given to us, we have into the area of an equilateral triangle is 53 root 3 centimeters square. Find correct to the nearest tenth, the perimeter. Now, let's consider perpendicular from this point to that. So, um, this is 90 degrees. Now, let's suppose that this is A, this is B, this is C, and then this is the height. Now, let's consider an angle here which is theta. So you know that area of a triangle is half times base times height in the case that you know the perpendicular height. What about if you don't know the perpendicular height? Now from this, you see sine theta, sine theta. How do you find sine theta? Sine theta is what? Opposite, opposite, which is H over the hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse? A. So hypotenuse is A. Sine theta. So opposite over hypotenuse. So uh, H over A, which implies that if you want to find uh, H, you multiply here by A, multiply here by A. So A times sine theta equal to A times H over A. So this is cancelling out that. So we have our H to be equal to A sine theta. That is our H. Our H is A sine theta. Therefore, our A is half times B, times V, times V. And then what is our H? Our H is A sine theta. So that's A sine theta. So in the event that we don't know the height, we are saying that the area is half A, B sine theta. In the event that we don't know the height, in the event that we don't know the height. Now, the area of an equilateral, so for equilateral or the sides are the same. Equilateral or the sides are the same. So let's consider a triangle whereby equi, so this is x, this is x, this is x, all the sides are the same. Very, very important. Now, for equilateral, because all the sides are the same, all the angles to are the same and it is equal to 60 degrees. It means that the angle here is 60 degrees, the angle here is 60 degrees, the angle here is also 60 degrees. All the sides, all the sides are the same, what the angles to are the same. So this side is the same as that side, is the same as that side. Now we want to find the perimeter. Perimeter is basically the sum of all the sides, so addition of all the sides. That's the Perimeter, but we don't know the size. We know the area. Now we are being given that area is equal to 53 root 3 centimeter squared. This is the area. Now from the area, we'll be able to know the size. But we know that here we don't know the height. Now, area of a triangle is given by half times A times B sine the angle and this is equal to 53 root 3 area of a triangle if you don't know the height it's half AB sine theta half AB sine theta where theta is the angle between the two sides so let's see in this case we have half now in this case all the sides are the same so you have X times X Sine of the angle. What's the angle? Sine. The angle is 60. Equal to 53 root 3. So from here we'll be able to get our x. So clearly we have half times x times x. That's x times x. That is what? x squared. S times x. That's x squared. We have sine 60. What is sine 60? Using the calculator, sine 60 is root 3 over 2 and this is equal to 53 root 3. Now what do we know? When you multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So x squared times root 3 and clearly we are going to get root 3 x squared. Now 2 times 2 so that is over 4 and this is equal to 53 root 3. What is the LCM? LCM is 4 so we have 4 times root 3 over 4 
x squared equal to 4 times 53 root 3. Now this 4 is cancelling out the 4 over there. So we have root 3 x squared equal to 4 times 53. And clearly that is 212 root 3. We want to find x. But what is being multiplied? What is multiplying the x? That is we have root um, 3. So we divide both sides by root 3. This is cancelling out that. So this is also cancelling out that one. So we have x squared equal to 2, 1, 2. We want to find x. So clearly the square will become square root, square root of 2, 1, 2. Now we punch square root of 2, 1, 2 on the calculator and um, okay so that is our x is 212 now we want to find the perimeter perimeter we know perimeter total distance around a, a figure so here we have x plus x plus x perimeter perimeter x plus x plus x now what is our x what is our x our x is root 212 and root 212 Punching it on our calculator, x is the same as 2 root 53. Uh, our x is 2 root 53. So we have 2 root 53 plus 2, or clearly, now what is x plus x plus x? And this is the same as 3x, x plus x plus x, that is 3x. And what is our x? Our x is 2 root 53. So we have 2 root 53. Now 3 times 2 root 53 and clearly this is the same as 6 root 53. And when we punch this on the calculator, we are getting 43.680659334. Now we are being told to find correct to the nearest thing. Correct. So this is the correct to the nearest so the nearest tenth will be on this nearest hundred, nearest thousand. So to the nearest tenth will be on this, on this. Is, but this eight will change the six to seven. So this is approximately forty-three point seven. Is this centimeters? Yes. Yes. So this is to the nearest tenth. That will be on this one. Isn't it easy? Very very easy. Very very interesting. I have amazing lesson on menstruation one, menstruation two, all the topics in core mathematics. Everything has been explained to the barest minimum. I've solved a lot of questions because I have the weak student in mind. Don't forget, no pain, no gain. Mathematics is not a spectator of sports. And then the height, reached and kept by great men were not attained by sudden flight. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. What is your challenge in commerce? Are you struggling? Are you going to write? Now there, are you going to write May, June? Don't worry. I have explained everything on pen drive for you. And then if you need all the lesson on, um, that is all the questions, that is the current paper that I've been written, that is Novdek 2022. Everything, I've solved everything and it is available on my website, www stevecons.com if you have any challenge of um, subscribing kindly um, whatsapp me call me i would be able to help you out